don't let the thumbnail fool you. I have read seven things so far this month. One of those is a short story. One of those is what some people would classify as a novella, but I classify as simply a short novel. And the other five were novels. Now I suspect that I will not be reading nearly so much in the second half of the month because there is a ton, a ton of writing I am supposed to be doing that I have been putting off in favor of reading. Whoops. So yeah, I'm gonna have to rectify that. But still really good month so far. Uh, it's also been a very much a KJ Charles heavy month, which should surprise no one considering kind of the little KJ Charles historical MM kick I got into in the last week of August that has continued into this month. First of all, I read Wanted a Gentleman by KJ Charles. This is a purely historical romance novel. And this is the one that I said most people might consider a sh novella not a full novel. It's only about 150 pages. It is about a youngish man who is fairly down on his luck. Like he, he doesn't have a whole lot of means. He runs and prints a little marriage mart newspaper, personal ads essentially. And this takes place in the Georgian or the Victorian era, somewhere in between there. I don't remember the exact dates of when this one was set. So yeah, so there's that character. And then there is a black gentleman who is of fairly good means. Like he's kind of, I want to say, investment merchant class. And then we do find out that he was born a slave and he was sent back to England to a family as a gift and was raised as kind of like a little house slave pet type person, uh, fairly well educated by the benevolent masters, and then on his 18th birthday was set free, turned into a free man, and given the amount of capital that he would have fetched on a auction block, again, by the benevolent masters. And he has since used that money to become to invest in other black English enterprises. And so it's turned him into, you know, a comfortably wealthy investment merger. Okay. And he has been contacted by the family who raised him, who owned him, right? Because their daughter is carrying on a, an illicit flirtation with someone that they do not, they do not know like they haven't met him and so therefore they don't approve of him and they suspect that it's a kind of a mercenary rogue who's trying to ruin her reputation so that he can get her fortune and they've requested that he look into it and find out who's doing it and, and you know separate them and all sorts of stuff and as you can imagine the girl and her lover have been conducting their secret flirtation through the advertisement pages that are down on his luck marriage mart publisher puts out and so this throws the two men together and everything spirals out of control for a very short story it is jammed full of humor and action and character development and a lot of commentary on you know politics and race and it's fantastic i loved it i read it in a day not just because it was short but just because it is like such a rollicking little adventure i couldn't put it down so the next historical romance i read was an unseen attraction also by kj charles this one i actually owned an ebook format and i finally got around to reading it well, i say finally but i think this is actually one of her 2017 series this is the first book in a little trilogy of companion novels it takes place firmly, I want to say, in the Victorian period. And our protagonist's name is Clem. He is a son of an English gentleman who sired him via a Indian nurse. There's no like, kind way of putting it right. Like the nurse was in the employ of the gentleman's brother and the gentleman imposed on her and took his son and then sent her packing back to India. Okay. And then Clem was raised as a bastard second son who now runs a boarding house in kind of an international district of London, somewhat at the benevolence of his older brother, who is now the leader of the family. Uh, his brother is the one who owns the boarding house property. And 
he lets Clem run his business there. His only stipulation is that Clem has to provide a room for this old drunken lout of a reverend. And Clem's not a fan of the reverend, but at the same time, he's very loyal to his brother and to his family. And it's a pretty good situation he's got. Our other character is a tenant in the boarding house who is a taxidermist who has a little taxidermy workshop next door and there is a, an adorable cute little romance between those two. Clem is a neuroatypical character. I, I don't he has some social anxieties that I think fall somewhere around the Asperger's end of the autistic spectrum but I say that knowing that I don't think Asperger's is a term a, a clinical term that's used anymore I think it's considered outdated so I don't know enough about autism and the autism spectrum to really talk on the, talk about this eloquently but I, I believe he is intended to fall somewhere on that spectrum I will say the first half of the story is quite slow going and I hate taxidermy so that was a huge turnoff even though I really liked the taxidermist character I hated the bits about taxidermy so the first half of the book I really was kind of struggling with I liked the characters but it was slow and I didn't like part of the kind of slow meandering plot the taxidermy part and then there's a murder that occurs halfway through the book and from that point on through the rest of the book it's very typical rollicking adventure murder mystery historical KJ Charles which I love. So I loved the second half of this book. I think I ended up giving it four stars overall. I'd give the first half like three stars and the second half four, four and a half stars. So average together about four, three, four, about four stars. I think if you are at all interested in like an MM romance series about more uh, middle class working professional characters with diversity, this is a great series. I also really enjoyed Clem's Friends who like I said will are, are the protagonists of the companion novels and so I'm really excited to also read their stories and to see what else happens with Clem and Raleigh's characters as they will be you know secondary characters in later books. After that I read Solace by Gail Carriger. This is a pretty popular author slash series on booktube. Uh, in particular I've seen Sylvia talk about the series multiple times. I know this is one of I think her favorite steampunk series so I decided to go ahead and pick it up since I was on this historical romance kick. I gave it four stars. There were parts of it that were totally five stars. There are other parts of it that I didn't care for. There is quite a bit of anti-Italian racism an annoying amount of misogyny both external and internalized misogyny there's like some implied sort of fat shaming so there's just like there's a bag of just annoying shit in it that is I think chalked up as being well it's a historical and that gripes me because you don't have to normalize shitty behavior even if you're writing historical books because not everyone thinks and acts the same way. Like even when you have rampant racism in a society, not everyone is always a racist like or a misogynist. So it's a choice on the author's part to include those elements so strongly and to not challenge or analyze them and Gail Carriger doesn't really challenge them to be honest. Uh, one of the biggest things that knock this down for me is the ending where we have this really gumptious, strong, independent female protagonist who is kind of reduced to a damsel in distress in the final scene and so it's just like <sighs> But the one redeeming factor for it is very much the relationship she has with Lord Macon, who is the love interest. She's so take charge in that burgeoning affair that I loved it. Like I really loved their chemistry. I liked the story. I liked the setting. I liked some of the secondary characters. Crows in the background, if you can hear those, I apologize. The, the, the thing that also kind of I don't know how I feel about it. it. There is a vampire who is the only gay character in the series and he is such a fop, such a dandy, like so campy 
that's the other thing. He's like so campy, stereotypically gay. When I use the scare quotes, I don't mean he's not gay. I just mean like gay people aren't just queer eye for the straight guy. Does that make sense? And so he and all of his little followers are so campy that it was a little annoying because it's just it's a stereotype like it's not good characterization it's just stereotypical characterization but at the same time he is a great character so like I liked him as a character but also I was just like uh, some of the author authorial choices just uh, were just like this could have been outstanding and it was only entertaining there we go the next thing I read was The Stone Sky by N.K. Jenison. This is the third book in the Broken Earth trilogy. I just posted a discussion slash review video that goes over my thoughts on all three of these novels. So I'm not going to talk about it here. If you're at all interested or curious what the series is about, it's a uh, sci-fi fantasy, apocalyptic, powerful, powerful series. I would say check out that video. I gave this book five stars. It blew me away. I have not been able to stop thinking about it and I desperately, desperately want to reread it. It was so good. Then after that I finally finished reading Infinity Wars. This is a multi-author anthology of military science fiction edited by Jonathan Strahan. Strahan? Strahan? I have been saying his last name incorrectly and every single time I mentioned it so ugh. anyways I have a full review of my thoughts on this collection as well I will link it up above you can check it out I gave the collection on average four stars all of the stories were quite good it was a very cohesive multi-author collection and if the subject matter is at all interested interesting to you I would suggest checking it out and then I started another KJ Charles series so on overdrive with my library you can recommend your library purchase ebooks and add them to the collection like i said i already owned an unseen attraction and i have the second book on recommendation for my library but they haven't picked it up yet but they did have the first book in another one of her series so i decided to go ahead and read that and this is another historical romance this one is definitely a regency era romance and it is called a fashionable indulgence so this book is about a young man named Harry. He is the son of two political radicals who ran from England when they were involved in a riot when he was a young boy. His parents eventually die many years later. He moves back to England and gets a job with one of their radical political friends who works as a bookshop owner printing seditious pamphlets. And he's dirt poor. He doesn't know anything about any other family he might have. And he's just trying to scrape by and not get caught by the government or the police. One day his grandfather tracks him down and takes Harry in with the stipulation that he wants Harry's cousin, who's the wealthy man and the younger son of the Marquess in the family, and he wants the cousin Richard to turn Harry into a gentleman so that the grandfather can marry Harry off because his other grandson has died. And he is ter the grandfather is terrified of like his line ending. So he's willing to overlook the fact that Harry's own father, who he disinherited, was this terrible radical. And so we get the story of one of Richard's friends trying to turn Harry into a gentleman, pass him off in society, etc. And of course, the friend whose name is Julius and Harry fall deeply in love. And there's all this drama about Harry's past and his unfavorable family, like his parents and whether he's a radical too and this whole crazy plot with his grandfather and it's just it is a rollicking good time it's super entertaining i love julius and the secondary cast is great so i'm super excited to read the other books in the series if you are looking for a fun light fashionable historical romance i would totally suggest checking it out and then the last thing i read was a short story called the ruin of gabriel ashley technically this is a prequel short story to 
a fashionable indulgence but I read it after and I would suggest doing that because it tells the little fun little tale of how two of the secondary characters from that book get together and so I think it's good to read a fashionable indulgence first so that you're introduced to the characters. Anyways The Ruin of Gabriel Ashley was fantastic just so good. The story opens Gabriel waking up the morning after he has foolishly gambled away all of his money, his inheritance and his house to Francis and Francis invites him over to play cards to try to win everything back. And it is a fucking delight. So if you pick up a fashionable indulgence, don't forget to also check out The Ruin of Gabriel Ashley. I've talked way too long <laughs> For about all of these books. Basically it has been one heck of a historical romance month and I have no shame about that. Uh, I am currently reading Changeless which is the sequel to Soulless by Gail Carriger. Parts of it I'm liking, parts of it I, I don't. There's one particular character who was introduced in the first chapter who I cannot stand. I almost DNF'd Changeless in the first chapter but I was like nah keep reading it give it to like page 100 and see what you think. He's off screen now so I'm like I I'm fine with what's happening. We'll see. I don't know I don't know if she's going to be an author. I continue to keep reading just because there are just some elements of the stories I don't like as much as there are other elements of it that I really do like. It's little conflicting. So I'm reading that. I also started reading Blaze of Glory which is the first book in this YA fantasy series. First chapter I liked and then the second chapter gets really expository and I don't like the way Michael Pryor is writing his magic system. Like he writes it as though it's really detailed but at the same time I feel as though doesn't really have firm rules for it if that makes any sense. So I, I put this down but I will come back to it hopefully soon. And then I'm also beta reading a book for a friend which is about 300 pages and I'm only 15 or I'm 15 or 20 percent into that and of course I can't talk about it because you know it's a completely unpublished manuscript. So yeah those are the things I'm reading. Lots of fantasy, lots of historical. Uh, let me know if you've read any of the things that I mentioned or if I've inspired you to pick any of them up and I'll see you guys in my next video.